iron. You've got to knock it in with iron. Right? And some screws. Okay. So it can't even hold itself up. For he had provided for it that it might not fall, knowing that it was not unable to help itself. Right? For it is an image and have need of help. So it needs, that shows you it's of nothing. Create that image, you need to knock it in with needles. It can't stand up itself. Right? It can't hold itself up. Okay. These things aren't, they're idols. They're of no use. Right? Rem make if he pray for his goods. Okay. Let's read that again. We're on verse 17 of Wisdom of Solomon 13 and 17. Then he make a prayer for his goods. So you have people that do that today. You know when you see them, them little Buddha statues? That so called represents prosperity. They are more prosperity riches. This is why people do this. Okay. Making a prayer for his goods. Right? For his wife and for his children. So you've got people praying to idols for prosperity for their children. Right? This is what you got going on. Okay. For good luck. For a good journey. Okay. And it's not a shame to speak to that which have no life. You're speaking to something that carries no life. Nothing. Right? For health. So they even pray to it for health. For good health. Unbelievable. And he called up upon rat which is weak. For life prayeth to that which is called dead. So life and what we're living, praying to something that is dead. It's a dead thing. Okay. For eight. Okay. It says for eight. Humbly. Right. Beseecheth. Right. Rat which leans me have least means to help. So these things can't help you. We are idols. Right? There is no power within them. And for a good journey, right? For a good journey, he asks of rat which cannot set a foot forward. So when people go on their journeys, what, what are they praying? Huh? What, what, what are they praying? They're praying to these idols. For good luck, good prosperity, all those things. But these things don't profit. They are vain things. Okay. And for gaining. So also for gain. So you do know people in these businesses. That have large businesses within London. The cities. How do you think they get in their fortune and their fame? By praying to demons. That's how you attain in this world. It's straight up. Because it's not, Yahabashai, see, he, Yahabashai blesses his men with things, with more, more so wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and a few things here and there, right? But to make it in the society, people got to do what sacrifices to these idols, right? Vain sacrifices that do not profit, right? And for gaining and getting, right? To get, to gain, and for good success of his hands, right? Whether it's seances, whether it's going into office and bedding over for a, a, a Malachite, right? Whether it's sacrificing a love, a so-called loved one, just like these musicians, right? That's what they do. Look at Jennifer Hudson, sacrifice her family. A lot of these musicians have done it. Right, Kanye, just for fame, and now you see him bawling, crying, Well, mama, because well, he sacrificed, okay. And you had that, my well, man, this is what really goes on. That's why you what, have to have integrity. And what we'll find out a lot of men don't have integrity within this truth, a lot of our people they don't have true integrity, okay. And ask if ability to do of him when our ability is first of all we've been given ability through you have a shy scriptures tell you that in Matthew 20 25 about them talents given to what every man according to his ability to do of him that is most unable to do anything so they can't do anything okay they're idols okay idols don't profit right 
and your house show. What do you think he's coming coming back to do? Okay, destroy these idols. Okay, and everyone that what wants to worship them. Okay. Oh, no, excuse me. Let's go to Romans. It's Romans 1 and 18. For the wrath of the Most High is revealed from the heaven against all ungodliness, right? And unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in, in unrighteousness. And you got a lot of our people, yes, they're holding the truth in unrighteousness. Okay. In deceit. Because that which may be known of the Mosai is manifest in them, for the Mosai have shown it unto them, his elect, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. The invisible things of him, of Yahweh Shai, are seen through what? The physical. The invisible things. Trees, birds, bees. Okay. Are seen. Right? By the, what, the things that are invisible, because before it was formed, what the word had to be spoken, it says that it went in John 1, right? Being understood by the things that are made, okay, even his eternal power, right? And Godhead, divinity, right? So they are without excuse. So our people, they are without excuse. Because the works of Yahweh are shown every single day, every single day, all right? Because that, when they knew the Most High, they glorified, glorified Him not. They'd rather glorify an idol, right? Some gold, okay? Not as the Most High, neither were they thankful, but became vain in their imagination. So our people, they're very unthankful, okay? Thank Yahweh That's why you always got to say, Tawadi Yahweh, Tawadi Yahweh, Bai Sham, Yahweh Shai. Tawadi Yahweh, Tawadi Yahweh, Bai Sham. Yahweh Shai. But neither were they thankful, but became vain in their imaginations. They became vain. They became deceived in their own imaginations. Right? And the scripture says, if any man think he knoweth anything, when he, um, that he seems to know, um, he, he's a fool. Okay? Paraphrasing. Okay? And their foolish heart. Okay? was darkened right their mind professing themselves to be wise they became fools okay and changed the glory of the incorruptible power into an image made like the corruptible man so it said, it said change of what the incorruptible what similitude of what the power Yahweh Shai into what, a similitude of what beasts corruptible man right how does man become corrupted? By idols. Okay. And birds. Okay. And four-footed beasts and creeping things. That's why when you look at these idols, what do you see? Four-footed beasts. Okay, different things. Man. All ties back to idolatry. Right? Wherefore the Most High also gave them up. Right? He gave over their spirit to uncleanness through the loss of their own hearts right to dishonor their own their own bodies right between themselves what does that go into when it says dis dis dishonor their own body dishonor their own bodies amongst themselves homosexuality sodomy same-sex marriage the lord gave them over to do those things that were unseemly Wherefore the Master also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts, their minds to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. So a man laying with another man, that's dishonoring your own body, your own flesh, right? Who changed the truth of the Most High into a lie, right? Esau done that. He changed his truth into a lie. 
right? And worship and serve the creature more than the creator, right? Who is blessed forever, Aman. So our people, they digress so bad, they serve the creature more than the creator. The creature, right? Instead of serving Yahweh Yahweh they serve the creature, right? Unbelievable. Okay. Unbelievable. But the Lord Yahweh is coming to do away with all these idols. Let's go to Isaiah 13. I think Isaiah 2, Isaiah 13. Isaiah 2. It's Isaiah 2, right? This is Isaiah 2. And we're going to jump straight to. Go straight to verse 6. Wherefore thou hast forsaken thy people, the house of Jacob, because thou be replenished from the east. Right? In the east, what were they known for? Their magis, their sorcery. That's what they were known for. Right? And our soothsayers. So what's soothsaying? Another word for soothsaying is what? Divination. And that's what our people were doing. They were doing divination. Which according to the scriptures, we're not supposed to be doing. Right? Like the Philistines, because that custom was through what? The Philistines, right? And it says, and they pleased themselves and the children of strangers. This was our own people. They were keeping the customs of the strangers, right? Their land is also full of silver and gold. Neither is there any end of their treasures, right? And it says, their land is also full of horses. Neither is there any end of their chariots. You can refer that to what? America today, which is known as what? Babylon. Their land is full of idols. They worship the work of their own hands. So the land of America, Babylon, is full of idols. Right? What do you have? Okay. That tower in New York. I forgot what it's called. Okay. Ah, that's it. The Statue of Liberty. That's an idol. Right? When you go to Paris, what do they have? The Eiffel Tower. That's another idol. And what do you have in Saudi Arabia? The phallic. Right? And a phallic, what is it? It's supposed to be a man's rod. Which we're not supposed to worship those things. Right? So all these are what? Idols. Okay? The worship of the work of their own hands. That which their own fingers have made. Okay, and the mean men boweth down, and the great man humbleth himself, therefore forgive them not. And you had that during what the time of Nebuchadnezzar, see, we could even go into that if I got more time. Let me check the time, right? A little bit more time, okay? When Nebuchadnezzar was trying to what, get the people to bow down, which he did, okay? And it says. Enter into the rock and hide thee in the dust. So that's what the elites are going to be doing, hiding in these other um, these underground bases, these bunkers, and so forth. Is that entrance? Yeah, it's still there, right? For the fear of the Lord Yahweh, I was shy, right? And for the glory of His Majesty. So you're going to have those that are part of this beast system. They're going to try to hide, including the wicked of our people, because that that severe judgment is coming upon. Those that were against Yahweh Shai. Yes, Esau, the other nations, but those that were against Yahweh Shai. And all those same men there back here again today, them chief priests, them Pharisees, them wicked elders, they're all back here again today. Scheming, putting on Yahweh Shai. Right? And that's why it says in Matthew, what, 20, something, 23, fill ye up, then what? The measure of your father. So those men, they have to fill up, yes, that measure of their fathers. They have to fill it up. They have to. Right? Just so rare judgment can be what? Justified. Right? Now let's stay stay on point. And it says the lofty looks of man shall be humbled. And this look, this city, they're, they're so they're so lofty. These places are so lofty. So it says, yes, the lofty looks of man shall be humbled. Okay. 
the lofty looks of man shall be humbled and the haughtiness of men shall be bowed down so who's lofty right now you know Esau yeah some of these other nations and also also them Pharisees they're lofty right so they're, the, they're gonna be the ones that are what gonna be brought down right and the Lord Yahushua alone shall be exalted in that day it's Yahushua that's gonna be exalted not man Yahushua is gonna be exalted right for the day of the Lord of hosts Yahushua shall be upon everyone that is proud and lofty right and upon everyone that is lifted up and shall be brought low so everybody that's lifted up in the society what they're going to be brought low that's why Yahweh always said it's better to be of what a humble and contrite spirit okay and upon all the cities of Lebanon and all the high and lifted up and all upon the oaks of Bashan and upon all the high mountains and upon the hills that are lifted up and upon every high tower and upon every fence wall right so you notice how it says high tower high mountains mountains also represent what governments right there's such a thing when the elites have their summit meetings the summit is the highest peak of what that mountain right that government right and even these governments are going to be brought down and upon every high tower and upon every fence wall and the ships of Tarshish Spain and upon all the pleasant pictures your idols and the loftiness of man shall be bowed down and the horses of men shall be made low okay just a minute got a crab spider on my arm on my, on my device <laughs> excuse me okay everything that's exalted in this world is going to be brought down but men don't men see they want to be exalted here right then when you have a shot starts stripping that spill off them they wonder what why is he why is he because you, ne you never took that low seat you wanted that high seat this ain't about views it's ain't about popularity this ain't a popularity contest it's about who Yahweh by Sham Yahweh is dealing with and yes he's dealing with the lowly he's not dealing with the, with the, the many the multitude of many that want to want to name here right that want fame here And the idols he shall utterly abolish. The idols are going to be done away with. Utterly abolished. Completely abolished. Everything that's exalted. Right? All them high towers, your high buildings that people visit. Why do you think people come to particular cities? To visit the buildings. Okay, excuse me. To look at these structures. Okay. Look at these so-called magnificent structures right and it says okay just a minute and it should go into the holes of the rocks into the caves of the earth for the fear of the lord Yahweh of shy and for the glory of his majesty right when he arises to shake terribly the earth so when Yahweh comes back what do you think he's going to be doing shaking the earth and he's going to be shaking it terribly right terribly a lot of people are going to be scared they're going to be afraid they're going to be amazed at Yahweh is coming this is what we're preparing ourselves for now and brothers fast more pray more right ask for guidance ask for mercy and you would know if a man's been shown mercy by what the spirit he has towards Yahweh and you would know if a man hasn't been shown mercy because he's going to be in an evil wicked vindictive demonic spirit well that's a man that if, by the look of things he ain't been shown mercy right there's a particular spirit these men were going to have in these last days right and it says bear in just a minute and it says he's going to shake terribly the earth right and in that day shall a man cast away his idols of silver and his idols of gold which they shall made each one for himself right to worship to the most of the bats so them idols are not going to do anything all right they were never answering you to begin with okay to go into the clefts of the rocks and into the top of the rugged rocks for the fear of the Lord Yahushua and the glory of his majesty this is these underground bases these underground bunkers which the elites have invested more than millions into these um, billions into these underground bases right 
and just type it in, type in underground cities, underground, there's underground cities, there's underground bases. But why have the elites done this? Because the elites are wise enough to know that Yahweh Shai exists. See, the ordinary person says, no, oh, there's no God. But even the elites, why would they be building these underground bases? Why would they be building these things? Right? Because they know that Yahweh Shai is coming back. Why would they be building um, what do you, what do you, the space program? Because they want to try to fight against what Yahweh Shai and his angels. Okay. That's why. Where else was we? And the Isis, you shall abolish. To go into the clefts of the rocks and into the top of the ragged rocks. Okay. For the fear of the Lord Yahweh Yahweh Shai. And for his glory of his majesty when he comes. Okay. And when he arrives to shake terribly the earth. And that's what he's coming to do. Shake terribly this earth. Terribly. Right. Whew. That's what he's coming to do. Go to Psalms. See if I can find it. Alright. Oh man. Particular scripts I ain't been on for a particular time. Let's go actually bear just a minute. Oh man, see if I can find this. No, I don't remember where that was. I don't remember where that was. But yeah, your house was coming to what shake this earth terribly. That's why we want to be what right now. Right? Get right now. Okay. Before it's too late. Seek the Lord Jehovah why I was shine now. Before it's too late. Right? This is the time to get this word. Right? Before it's too late. Because them doors of mercy, they're about to close. So get this word now before it's too late. Alright? Let's see what else we got. See what else we got. Ah, oh, man. And remove yourself from what? Ah, bear with me a minute. Yes. Remove yourself from the wicked as well. Right? And ultimately, Yahweh is going to do that. Right? Let's go to... Luke 13 and 4. Yeah, it's, it's spiritual. I'm just, you know, you just test out the waters. I'm st you're still getting responses. I've got, I got the sign, I've got the mark of the beast, and I've got the 12 tribe sign. And you still get a response. So whether you're out on the streets or not, you still, you're still going to get a response. Lord willing, someone will ask questions. You know? Lord willing, we just see how things go. Maybe just a minute. Me, personally, I do prefer to be out on the, on the highways because it's more it's, it's it's more intense it's more just there you know what I'm saying but this is it's still good I can't complain as long as your how I keeps your spirit up on me to teach this word that's the main thing right so let's go to um baby with Luke 13 and 4 Luke 13 and 4 and I hope this has been edifying for you for, for those of you all right that are listening 13 and 4, right? So at 13, there were present at the season some that told him of the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifice. So you had Israelites that were telling Yahweh Shah of what? Blood. Okay, of what? Dead Israelites that were mixed. Okay, that Pilate mixed with what? Sacrifices. And these were wicked sacrifices right and it says and you have to answer and said unto them suppose ye that these were galileans right and galileans is what yahweh was what born right <laughs> were sinners above all the galileans so yahweh was saying all right those that suffered that fate were they sinners above all that were what in galilee because they suffered such things so that's what yahweh was asking them well, were they sinners amongst the? Were they more of sinners than the others of Israel that suffered that fate? Because men have that mentality. Well, well you know, uh, they try to count up sins. Well, uh, he, how much sins has he uh, done? He has four. I have, I have ten. 
Oh, with that type of I, so like a, I, I have four, he has ten. That type of spirit. That's not a good spirit to be in. Okay, at all. So anyway, let's continue. I tell you, neighbor, except ye repent. That's the key thing, repentance. Except ye repent. Right? Ye shall all likewise what perish. So you could be looking at others, right? And saying, well, you know, this ain't right, that ain't right. Except ye repent. Ye shall also what? That likewise. This is about what? Yes, repentance. You can look at, look at another, what another man's doing, but except ye repent, likewise ye shall perish. Or those 18 upon whom the tower in Salayam fell, and it was known about this particular incident that a tower in Salayam, particular region, what fell, right? And slew them. Think ye that they were sinners above all men that dwelt in Jerusalem. So what, were they more sinners to than those that fell in Jerusalem? The answer is no. They still had sin, they didn't repent. I tell you nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. So that's, what was, what was the premise of that? You may even say, well this guy, you had sin. But you examine yourself, unless you repent, you shall perish likewise. So you need to repent. Right? For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Okay? You can't look at someone else and say, well, he's got more sin. Well, if you're sinning and you ain't repented, you're going to suffer the what? That same fate. Right? Unless you repent. Alright? So now we're going to go into Romans. See what we can find. Right? Romans. And that's spiritual. Right? Everything that happens around us is spiritual. Right? And the, guess what? Yeah, the sick are being healed. By what? This word. This word is a healer for our people. Right? Let's go to Romans. Right? Um, oh, bear me just a minute. Bear me just a minute. Let's go to Romans 4. Actually, go to five. Therefore, being justified, okay, justified, and that's what you want to be justified in the sight of Yahweh Shai, not in the sight of men, right? Men want to be justified amongst themselves because they're wicked. It tells us that in Luke 17, ye are they which justify yourselves before men, but that Yahweh Shai knows your hearts, okay, okay. Don't seek to be justified by this world. Okay. And it says, being justified by faith is the faith that you have in Yahweh Shai that's going to justify you. If you don't have faith, well, how do you, how do you expect to be protected in these times? Especially with Jacob's trouble, all this stuff that's going to happen. Right? Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with the Most High through our Lord Yahweh Shai. That's how we have that peace. Right? That's how we have that peace. Through the belief, through the faith. And a lot of men they're trying to they're trying to they're trying to shake your faith. They're trying to stop you from, from they're not even teaching you about you have a shy. All this about Esau. But who were the main corporate enemies of our people? It was our own people. You got men again, yeah, we teach you of Esau, because I even teach you of Esau, he's a devil, he's going down. But you got our people, they're trying to divert you from your Habashai. Right? They're not getting you, to, they, they're getting you away from your Habashai. We're supposed to be getting you to your Habashai. Not away from your Habashai. Right? See what else we got? By whom we also have access by faith. So we have access to the Heavenly Father through your Habashai. Through faith. Right? Into the grace we're in. You stand. Right? This is a thing right now. Grace. Where we stand. That mercy. Wherein you stand. Okay? And we grace in the hope of the glory of our power. And not only so we but we glory in tribulations, also knowing that tribulation worketh patience. 
so we continue glory, right? And you may be asking me, well, what, what, why has he moved? Why has he gone? Because you've got to pay attention to what the Holy Spirit is saying, right? And it's hard when you when you, it's like when when you've been teaching in a particular place, it's like you built up a bond with certain people. You built up a bond in that particular region, but then it's like, what did the disciples do? They were not just in one place, right? The disciples, they were not just in one place. They went to different regions, healing, doing miracles, preaching the gospel. So in this word, the scriptures also says that as well. You as pilgrims, maybe just a minute. And knowing that patience work in, so tribulation work in patience and patience experience and experience hope and hope maketh not ashamed because the love of the most is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit which is given unto us for when we were yet without strength in due time Mashiach died for the ungodly right so we are as pilgrims even Yahweh Shai said he had nowhere to what a certain dwelling place to rest his head so does this mean oh no you don't have a place no we still have places to rest our heads but in terms of this knowledge, we have no certain resting place here in this world. See, men that are comfortable, they think this is our rest. This ain't our rest. Micah 2 and I've been in that scripture for a long time. Micah 2 and 10. Arise, in the, arise ye and depart, for this is not our rest. For it will destroy you with a sore destruction. Right? This is not our rest. And you've got to mind out because GLCC was teaching. Well, uh, see, it says arise and depart, this is not our rest. So what, what were they doing? making individuals flee to Egypt right okay crazy ripping people off doesn't mean that I mean spiritually this is not our rest spiritually we need to depart from this place spiritually because if you're if, look if you're wicked and you flee you flee America you're not gonna be able to flee destruction right if you're two third and you flee America you still go suffer the fate of a two-third right we have no certain dwelling place right i quickly want to go into something bam just a minute it's spiritual it's very spiritual today as well that a lot of sick people have um walked past of our own people of our own nation may yahweh or shall heal you you know the lord came for the sick man especially those that acknowledge they're sick Right? That's who the Lord come for, man. You see, the disabled people, bro, miracles are going to be done. Great miracles are going to be done in these last days. I'm telling you, great miracles. Right? And you gotta have that. You gotta have that sympathy for the sick of our people because we were all fucked up in the spirit before we woke up to this truth, man. I'm speaking for myself. I, I was m messed up, and br br brothers know. Look at, what, look at what state I was when I was first coming to the camp in Oxford Street, you know? And some brothers say, oh, that, that was another chapter, you know? But look at what state I was at, till now. Yahweh he works miracles. All messed up. All messed up. Yahweh heals, man. He's a healer. He's a healer. Just have to believe that healing comes through belief. That's why I always, even though, yeah, we, we tell you the judgments and we tell you what's going to happen. There's, there's, all, there's room for mercy. There's still that room for mercy. Through the acknowledgement of what our sins. Don't need to pray to another man. You don't need to pray to your, to your camp leader. You don't, you don't need to, no, you pray to your Habashai. Right? That's who you pray to. Okay. So where was um particular scripture certain old dwelling place? Okay. Because things are gonna things are gonna intensify more and more and more and more. Right right here, baby this is second as was sixteen and forty. Oh my people. Who are the Lord's people? You saw called Negro Hispanics and Indianos. You are with Yahweh, where Yahweh Shai's people, right? Hear my word, right? This word's being declared. 
and those that have ears to hear are going to hear. Make you ready to the battle, right? And in those evils, and it's a spiritual battle, make you ready, prepare, preparation, planning spiritually. If you could do as, as, as much planning with the food and rationing, that's not going to get you through. It may help, but spiritually what planning, right? Oh my people that hear my word, make you ready to the battle and those evils being even as pilgrims upon the earth and he that selleth let him be as he that fleeth away. Right? So we're supposed to be as pilgrims upon the earth. Now a pilgrim is what? A traveller. Pilgrims. Right? He that selleth let him be as he that fleeth away. Right? So you're selling, but you're as one that's fleeing away. Right? You're not trying to hold on to anything here. All right, I bought, so you buy something, you may, you may lose that. You may need to get rid of something. That's the mentality we have. And he that buyeth, okay, has one that will lose. All right? He that occupieth merchandise, business. And the thing I'm noticing is truth. Most of our people, they're really, they're, they're more focused on the world. That's what scripture says. He that occupieth merchandise, as he that have, have no profit, buy it. You could have land. You may, you may have purchased something. You may have shares on something. Well, this kingdom's going down. So you, you may have shares upon something, but you're not taking them shares with you. Them, carn them, them carnal gains you're not, taking, you're not taking it with you You're not taking it with us, okay And he that buildeth us He shall not dwell therein Right That's the mentality we got to have Especially in these times Right And it's not that we're uncertain We're certain, we know what's going to happen So we need to be more what, on, 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 on our A game Okay, nothing but chemtrails in the air today. We ain't gonna, we ain't gonna have that in our kingdom. Nothing but chemtrails. And he that surface, he that shall not reap. That's one thing I'm into. I'm planting seeds and so forth. But he that shall not reap, right? Be as one that what will lose. You're not going to gather it. You planted a seed. You're not thinking, oh, I want my tomato seed. You are. I planted this tomato seed. Some, you know how long some seeds take? Some, 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 some seeds take weeks. Some, some seeds take months. Some seeds take two to three years to fully, fully, fully germinate. I planted some ginger. Bought some ginger from the store. I planted that ginger. That may take a year. That may, may take two years. Right? You don't want to be, I'll plant some food, well, well, I'm, I'm waiting for that, I'm waiting for that to, bro, don't want to be like that. And the people of the world, they have plans. When you speak about family, talk about plans, talk about, well, I'm going to a barbecue this year, next year. And when they say, you obviously, you don't bring up the scriptures to them if they're not receiving it. But it's irritating when people around you, they're talking about their plans that they have for two years, five years. Well, how do you know you're going to be, even be here for the next, for next week, for tomorrow? Okay, but this is that's that's pride. That's great pride. People have plans. Is it wicked to have a have a plan? No, but you're putting your trust in that plan. That the plans. No, because our whole life, our, all our steps are orchestrated by Yahweh Yahweh Shai. Scripture tell you that in Job, in deep sleep, the Lord Yahweh Shai what? When a man sleeping in deep sleep, the Lord Yahweh Shai seals the instructions of man to withdraw man from what his purpose. Okay, so you may say, well, I'm going to get up, I'm going to do this. What's that? The Lord withdraws man from, it, from his purpose. Well, oh, no, that's just a thing, that's just um, some... Of them. Look, that ain't, that ain't a chariot. Okay, so Lord Yahweh withdraws man from what? His purpose. Okay. To with, what, withdraw man from pride, to, to, to let you know, well, Yahweh is in control of all. the time
Hey, excuse me. Little bit more time left. Okay. And he that soweth as he shall not reap, so also he that planted the vineyard as he that shall not gather the grapes. Planting the vineyard, not gathering them, them, gathering them grapes. Right? That's the mentality. Ready to move. Right? Circumspect. Wasn't this, wasn't this year um, deemed the year of the hastening of the coming of Yahweh of Shai? So why would you be comfortable? Right? This ain't no time to be comfortable. You know? Never, never, you're, never, you're never not sure what might be next in terms of how your day might go. In terms of prophecy, we know what's going to be next. But in terms of how our day may go. Okay? Even a bird had to chime in on that. Very just a minute. And it says, And they that marry as they that shall get no children. Okay? And they that marry as they that shall get no children. So you don't have no children, it's no big deal. You know? It's no big deal. And of course, I, I even think about these things as well. Because you know, family members, you know, uh, you know, they, they're getting old now. You know? But, I always say, if it happens, all right, if you're getting busy and you so happen to have offspring, so be it. But you're not, you're not, you don't have the man out before. I've got to have offspring before, you know, before I pass away. And no, you're not thinking about it. If it happens, it happens through the spirit. Okay. They that marry shall, they, and they that marry as they that shall get no children. Right. And they that marry not as widowers. Okay, as those that don't have no what? Husbands, no wives. And therefore they that labour, labour in vain. Most people, they're labouring in vain. Scripture to read, read um, Solomon, the book of Solomon. Right? Okay, not the book of Solomon, Ecclesiastes, which is actually, it is the book of Solomon. Okay. When he talks about the vanities of vanities. It was all vanity. I have nice things. I have nice clothes. Most of my nice clothes, I've, I've given it to, um, you know, my brother. I don't want it. What's the part of wearing? So, look, I've got, I got Stone Island. I've got Ralph Lauren. It doesn't mean shit. I actually feel uncomfortable now. If, if I'm too, 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 wearing these nice stuff, it doesn't feel right. You just don't. Okay. See, that's part of that new man. If you were like that in the world, you become less. You just become more subtle. Doesn't mean I don't have nice things. I've got a, I've got a keeper ring on. But I keep it subtle, you know? You realise the, the longer you're in this truth, the worldly things mean less. The spiritual things mean more. The more you lose in the flesh, the more you gain in the spirit. But men don't want it. Certain men, they don't want to lose in the flesh because it's, it's not cool. It's not cool. No, what is cool is, is gaining in the spirit. That's cool. And they that marry, I say they get no children, they that marry, um, marry not. And they, therefore they that labour, labour in vain, for the strangers shall reap their fruits. So a lot of you do know a lot of people that are reaping fruits, planting fruits. The scriptures, the strangers shall reap their fruits. So a lot of food that's stored up and all these things, it's being stored up for the hopeful elect. It's being stored up for the hopeful elect. All this rationing. Okay. And when that scripture in Luke 21, when it says, somewhere in Luke 21, make sure your flight not be in the winter, and some of you, you flee, you have to flee. That ain't just speaking about 70 AD. It's not just speaking about that at all. That, what, that did happen in 70 AD. It's also referring to now, because you're going to have what? Individuals, they're going to have to leave their homes. In certain cases, you're going to have certain brothers that are on the run. Right? So that's twofold. Okay, and it says, maybe just a minute, for strangers shall reap their fruits and spoil their goods, what they have, overthrow their houses, and that's what's going to happen as well. You're going to have houses, yes, being overthrown, right, on a major scale, right? People breaking in, people are going to have them, if you, people are going to have them double locks on their doors, it's going to be doors being broken through. Right? It's going to be like a scene out of what? Living dead. Right? It's going to be pure, what? Pandemonium. Chaos. 
It's going to be on a large scale. Looting, rioting. Okay. The strange shall reap their fruits and spoil their goods and overthrow their house and take their children captives. You're going to have children being taken captives. Okay. It's going to get critical out here. For in captivity and family they shall get children and they shall occupy their merchandise with robbery. And the more they deck their cities, right? And their houses. Okay, their possessions in their own persons. The more I will be angry with them for they sin. So the more you're just gathering, 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 gathering in the physical, the more Yahweh will be angry with you because he doesn't want us to do that. He wants to gather us. He wants us to gather in the spiritual, right? So the more he'll be angry with you, right? Because we're supposed to be using this time to get more closer to Yahweh Shai, not by stacking up worldly things here. Okay. Like as a whore envy of a right and honest virtuous woman. So shall righteousness hate iniquity when she decketh herself and shall accuse her through her faith when he cometh shall, and shall that shall defend him and she didn't you search out every sin upon the earth. Right? We gotta seek Yahweh of Shai now. Why he may be found. Right? Check the time. Okay. A little bit more time. Listen. Go to Matthew 6 and 19 to back that up. Man, God, let's all take more time to, to study, to get into the scripture, fully, fully, fully immerse ourselves in the scriptures more than we immerse ourselves in the world. Okay. Go to Matthew 6. And 19, lay not up for yourself. This is one of my favorite scriptures. Lay not up for yourselves treasures, right? Upon earth, material. And again, you, you gotta you gotta keep things in the balance. Okay, you don't want to be looking at a brother. Why has he got this? Why has he got a nice chain? He's got a gold. Nothing's wrong with having a. You, you, you want a gold chain? You want to treat yourself? Nothing's wrong with that. You want to buy some new trainers? Nothing's wrong with that, right? But you're not trying to lay up. So in your mind, you're not thinking, well, oh man, you don't really want this place to go down because that means the house is going to go, that I've been paying the, 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 the mortgage or whatever, the house, the bills for, that's going to go. And you're thinking, well, I've been paying the bills, so no, I don't deserve it. No, the car is going to go. All these things, all these things are going to go, right? Because you've had people that have been working, and this is why people get so frustrated at this world, because it's like, hold on a minute. They've been working, you have some been working all their life, 50, 60 hard years, and more telling them this kingdom's going to go down. You really think the people want to hear that? They don't want to hear that. you you got to see, sometimes you have to see things from the eyes of the world. You've been putting in hard work for your children and doing this and doing that, laboring, busting, your, busting, your, busting yourself to earn some money. Busting your bullets to earn some money. Then to someone to tell you, well, this kingdom's going to go down. People don't want to hear that. That's why they react to what a certain way. But it says, lay, don't lay up for yourself trust upon earth where moth and rough doth corrupt. Because all these things are corrupt anyway. And moth and rough, that's what? Eat it. Right? Devour it. And may thieves break through and still, that can happen any time, but lay up for yourself treasure in heaven. This is what we're supposed to be doing every single day, laying up the treasures in the heaven. Because at the end of the day, when Yahabashah comes, he's going to say, well, what was you doing for me? What was you doing for me? Was you just, was you a part-timer? Was you just being a part-timer? Was you just a weekend prophet? No, it's a every, this is an everyday effort, every single day, right? Oh, man. When neither moth and rust have corrupt me, thieves do not break through nor steal. Thieves cannot break through nor steal this knowledge. I quickly want to go to John 10. John 10 and 10. Listen to this. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. So remember what the scripture says. Those that come in some other way, they're thieves and robbers. So you've got men. We know this is referring to Esau, but men, they only given you a, a, one, a one track mind. Okay, this is referring to men in the truth. The thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. You have men, they're trying to kill and they're trying to kill, they're trying to what? Steal, kill and to destroy what you've worked for. But they can't do that. 
because everything you've built up between your husband, that's between you and him. That's a relationship, right? That you've built up between you and your Habashai. Nobody else, you and your Habashai. And also, yes, the brothers that were around you that were sincere, that were of the, the hopeful elect. Okay. And it's spiritual because I'm looking at some clouds from a far distance. And a lot of these clouds, they actually look like chariots, in the form of chariots. Bear me just a minute. Okay. And it says, and I am come that they might have life. So you have to come that we may have life through him, through that faith. Right? That they might have life and they might, key thing, might have it more abundantly. So that's what the hopeful elect we're going to have. Life and they were going to have it, yes, ever so abundantly. Right? And he that believed on me, out of what? Belly show up, flow, rivers of living water. Right? So you were also going to be abundant What in these works? In the works of faith, charity, brotherly love, all these things. Thus, these are going to be the things that get you saved. Having the right mindset towards Yahweh, Baisham, Yahweh, all these things. Okay? Excuse me. Is there anything else? So you know what? I think we shut off here. We've been quite a lot of topics. A lot of subjects we got shut off here and lord willing this was edifying for the hopeful elect across the globe okay and until the next time shalom shalom